Okay, hello all. Thank you for coming here to see me when you, will, you could be in the next room seeing Chet doing his show, so it means a lot to me. Um, but let's begin. My name is Horace González. I am a Spaniard living in France. Uh, I work as developer at Citizen Data, a startup that deals with collecting, storing, and analyzing data. data. And I am also the leader of the Finnish Jug, the yoga of the Finnish Ter. And as you maybe have noticed, my English is, it isn't very good. My accent is really bad, but the, the good thing is my French accent is at least as bad as my English one, and even my Spanish accent isn't, isn't good anymore. So I really beg you to excuse me to, about my accent. I hope you will understand my talk. So let's begin. Today we are going to speak about material design. If you have seen the program of DevOps, material design is a big topic this year. I'm not going to do a full presentation of material design. If you want it, there is a keynote by Google tomorrow where they are going to explain the whole idea behind material design. But I am, at least I am introducing some concepts here now. So, you know, maybe in last Google I.O., they announced the new version of Android, Android L, that now it has become Android Lollipop, and this new Android has a new visual language, a new paradigm called material design. At the heart of this new paradigm, there is the idea of a unified user experience. The user should should be able to find the same kind of navigation, the same kind of user experience in any device, any platform, any size. They use a lot of metaphors with this visual language. The main one is a 3D metaphor. Each element is considered to be on a material. A material is like a sheet of paper, but um, a bit like a magical paper that you can grow or shrink, you can change form. But the idea is each element is in his own material. Materials are stacked one over another, and you have the same kind of 3D interaction you will find on your desktop. When a material is over another, you, can, you cannot use the material and the material in the low part. You have the, you have shadows that are cast, you can take a material, move around, put it in the top, in the bottom, etc. So, as I told you, there are a lot of things, a lot of interesting things in this new visual language. I have borrowed this slide from my friend Martin, uh, and tomorrow you will be able to see in the keynote the whole scope of material design. The idea is it isn't only for Android, uh, it's for the web, and it provides a unified user experience. So you as web developers, or even better, as Android developers, should be able to integrate easily this new paradigm in your application. So as I told you, it was announced at Google I.O. with the preview of Android L, and several weeks later, there was already a web implementation with Polymer paper. I don't know if you know Polymer, but there's a web component framework by Google too, and they have a full implementation of material design with all the components, and it's really great. It works very well. It works so well that I am doing a lab on that just uh, after this talk with the guys of Google. It's really wonderful, but I'm not speaking about it. Why? Because I prefer to speak now about angular material design. When I told that to some friend last week, he told me that the two technologies, angular and material, it's a bit like uh, enemy brothers. Uh, they eat, hate each other, and not, it's, it isn't that. In fact, Polymer and Angular are complementary technologies. They don't play in the same place. 
Polymer provides a web component abstraction to browsers today, an abstraction that will be a standard in any browsers in several years, but you can already use web components today with Polymer. And Angular, Angular is built to make big application in JavaScript easy to create and easy to make, uh, easy to evolve. They are complementary, they are so complementary that you can even use uh, Polymer inside your Angular application. But if they are, if they are so complementary, why, why they are, have created a material design implementation for Angular? Why not use directly that of Polymer? Because Angular is better for some kind of task, for some kind of user case. When you have a big application with complex navigation, do it in Polymer or your, today, it isn't easy. It, it becomes uh, rather quickly a mess. And for hybrid apps. I know when, I, when they call about hybrid apps, they are, there is usually a controversy. Many people consider that hybrid apps are the worst of both, of both worlds. You have neither the performance of native nor the, the easy of implementation of web. But when done right, hybrid apps can be the best of both, of both worlds. So I arrived to that last year when I discovered uh, Ionic Framework. It's a framework to build hybrid application and it's simply well done. It's easy, it's uh, rather pleasant to use and it uses Angular as a, as a user interface framework. And with Ionic you can build hybrid application quickly and without many of the problems that people usually think about when they think about hybrid application. So, to you, to, so I had built an Ionic application and when Material Design was released, I wanted to convert it to this new visual language. And then, and then I have found a small project that began at that moment, Angular Material Design. And the, the goal of this project was to create a full native Angular implementation of uh, material design components, interactions, stems, of all the concepts and guidelines of material design. There are some key concepts in Angular material design on Angular MD. MD. The first one is components. When the project began, it was a small project, but right now you can find inside the project all the standard components in material design, the cards, the toolbars, the sidebars, and all those components, like the material design guidelines ask for, they are full responsive. So if you want to adapt your application for the small, small screen, screen of a smartphone, to the big screen of a cinema, you have not many problems. You have a lot of breakpoints already, uh, of re already responsive, and your application is going to look uh, as the best and in its screen size. But if you want even more detail, you can play with layout. The idea is in normal web apps, in classical web apps, you use float to place your different component and you use a grid model to, uh, to try to define where in the screen each component is going to arrive. It doesn't work uh, always, but you, you can try. Here, they have decided to use uh, one of the newest uh, concepts in and CSS, the Flexbox model. So everything is based on Flex. Uh, if you have seen, if you have read about Flexbox, it's a new Plasma model for web application that allows to make easily things that were rather messy with uh, floats and grid, and grid models. And another thing is 
they don't use uh, CSS classes for the position or for the layout, like uh, Twitter Bootstrap and, and others. They prefer to use attributes. So there is an attribute layout that can say if the elements are going to be horizontal or vertical. There are attribute flex to define if the element must take all the place or only a fixed place. And this allows to keep um, the same logic that with HTML. So as I told you, everything is thought to be responsive. And if you want more control about responsiveness, there are some specific attributes and you can define will, will be a plasma in the different screen size. If you have seen material design guidelines, terms, colors are very important. They ask developers to make bold statements with colors. They ask to use vibrant colors, to have a main color in each component, and the other color will be taken from the same color palette to make accent, to keep a color coherency, but with bold color and bold contrast between the different compo components of the same application. Angular MD has taken the same path with Thames. There are, there are a, a whole taming framework with color palettes and fonts, uh, font family, font size, that allows you as developer to quickly and easily tame your, uh, apply terms to your application and to every individual component. They have a big catalog of terms, uh, press all, all, sorry, almost one by one, for each one of the color palettes defined in the material design guidelines. They are rather easy to use. You must include the term you are going to use in your application. If you have different components with different terms, you include all the terms you are, all your components are going to use. And for each component, there is an attribute and the term and you define, define the theme of this component and the theme of all his, his children, its children inside it. So themes are inherited by all the children of the component. So as conclusion, before we are going to take something to it, material design is a new paradigm. It isn't only for Android. You can use it in the web and there are easy ways to use it in many frameworks. The best, the best implementation for the web today is polymer paper. It works really, really very, very well. But if you want, if you need to use native Angular components, it's better to use um, Angular material design. And if you are using Ionic framework to build hybrid application, Angular material design is made for Ionic Framework by Ionic Framework and Angular guys. And it's a good answer to the, this problem. It isn't finished yet, but it can be used in true application. And every week, there are new commits that arrive at the repository. And I have two minutes go yet. And Angular material design. You have the components, you have a rich layout system, and you have all the theming possibility to implement most of material design guidelines on Angular today. So thank you very, very much for coming here. Thank you for coping with my accent. And if you have any question, we have still one minute left. So, no question. Okay. Thank you very, very much.